Okay, so now that your setup is complete and uh, you're good to go, I'm sure that you guys want to tinker with this thing and make it fly um, the best it can as well as make it suit your particular flying style the best it can. So as I stated, stated in the beginning, there's a couple of main screens that are the most important screens, um, the rotor screen and the tail screen. Let's go to these. So here, once again, I have my data pot connected and powered on. Push the S button, go to the rotor screen, as you can see here. That's our main screen rotor. <clears throat> so as we go down here, let's examine these options. We have agility. Um, this agility number here will be populated based on the heli wizard setting that you select, the, the style wizard setting that you selected. Right now it's 40%. That's actually pretty low for my flying style. Um, but anyway, agility determines how fast your, uh, your elevator and your aileron behave, how fast overall, how the speed of your cyclic. So how fast it'll roll, how fast it'll flip. Um, if in doubt, start at uh, 50 or so and work your way from there, um, or go with the setting that populates from the style wizard that you used earlier during the setup. Um, normally, if you go to style wizard and you load the style wizard, um, if you pick, for example, the Burt K, that'll go up to, I believe, 70, which is what I run. Um, if you go to newbie, then it'll go down to 40 or 30 or something. So <clears throat> just play with it, but basically that determines the speed of the helicopter in terms of roll and, uh, uh, roll and elevator. So uh, elevator and L run. So as we go down one here, style. Style is what determines the overall feel of the helicopter. So um, the Vortex works on some kind of fly bar simulator algorithm. So the lower you go on the style, the closer to a fly bar the helicopter will feel. The higher you go, the, the more synthetic, the more corrections, and the more that algorithm kicks in to make the helicopter stable. So if you go too high, it just feels kind of robotic. If you go too low, it feels just too loose and all over the place, more like a fly bar machine. So I personally like anything between 50 and 60. I, I run 55. But again, play with it. I believe the default is 70. Um, you can't go wrong with any of these settings. It's just strictly a matter of personal preference. Um, next up is gain. And gain will be populated on its own depending on the helicopter you have when you run the heli wizard. Um, the heli wizard, you pick the right size helicopter, the size of blades your helicopter helicopter runs, the, this option for gain will be populated. If you notice some oscillations on your helicopter, um, like a head oscillation, uh, a real fast head oscillation, then drop that number, reduce that number a little bit. For the most part, um, that number works really, really well. And be careful not to confuse an elevator bobble or wobble on a machine with an oscillation. An elevator wobble or a bobble is more of a mechanical characteristic of a machine reaching a certain resonance at a particular head speed range. Don't confuse that. Um, what I'm talking about is a high, it's a really high oscillation on the rotor head. If you see that, drop that gain. But again, you might never have to deal with that because it's generally not a problem for most people. Um, so those are our main options for the rotor menu. And then if I go all the way up and I click next, push the S button, and then I go to the tail menu. And then for tail, our first option is the, piro the pirouetting rate um, in degrees. So how many degrees you want that tail to pirouette um, per second? Um, as you can see, is at 400 degrees. 400 is really low. These settings were populated, I believe, from the Heli Wizard earlier where I selected Newbie. Um, I run, I believe, 620 degrees of pirouette rate. Just play with it and adjust your tail speed accordingly. And then if you go one down, it's your gyro gain. Nothing to it. This gyro gain setting works for mostly everybody. If you notice a little bit of a tail oscillation or a tail wag, just drop that gain a little bit. So that's all we have for, uh, for tail and, uh, and rotor. However, we have some pretty interesting uh, options here, and I'm gonna show you the advanced menu. So in the rotor menu, as you scroll down and you reach gain, and that lo it looks like that's our last setting there. Well, if you hold the plus button here, hold it for a second, then it opens up our advanced menu. And our advanced menu has a lot of different options, and I'm just gonna give you very, very brief descriptions about these options. Um, but 
Uh, if you go to the Spartan-RC.com website and you download the, the, the guide that I showed you earlier, there's explanations for every one of these options. So first one is mid agility. Um, what this means is it means uh, mid stick agility. Basically again run some kind of fly bar simulator software and the higher you put this number, um, it simulates a lighter paddle weight. So if you go really high, the helicopter really feels disconnected, at least to me. But some people like that feel. It just makes the helicopter a lot more, um, uh, more. I wouldn't call it vivid. It's just a, a lot more unstable, per se. I run that at 35 myself. I believe anything up to about 40 to 50 is okay. Beyond that, you start noticing the effects of running um, a lighter paddle. Um, next up is collective boost. And this just basically gives you a boost on collective um, it's actually a cool feature. A lot of people like them. It just allows, it makes the collective feel a little bit crisper and maneuvers like TikToks and rainbows and stuff like that. And um, for me, it's really not important because I fly Spectrum and, and Spectrum has a lot of collective authority, the radio itself. So next up is uh, pitch up compensation. And uh, this is a setting that if you increase the, the you, you might want to increase this value if your helicopter is pitching up and like fast forward flight. Um, normally the default I believe is 60 I think and it works really really well. Um, you don't have to mess with it. Actually most of these advanced settings you don't really even need to touch but um, they're there for your convenience for fine tuning things but in any case um, for example with this pitch up compensation setting you really don't need to mess with it um, but if you see that your helicopter is wanting to pitch up when you go really really fast fast forward flight then increase this number keep in mind that if you increase it too much then when you do maneuvers on the deck and 3d type of flying the helicopter will feel a little bit more robotic Next up is elevator pre-comp and the elevator pre-compensation uh, pre basically what it does is it mixes a little bit of collective um, to the elevator and the purpose of this is it's just um, when you're on fast forward flight some helicopters actually can benefit from this um, because it makes the, the forward flight behavior a little bit more predictable. However, if, if you set this parameter just way too high and it'll affect the the behavior it will affect the way the helicopter feels when you do like collective pitch pumps and stuff like that you'll feel like there's some elevator interaction so normally again no need to mess with it next down is the cyclic resp that means cyclic response that inc increases your cyclic response when you first hit the stick if you decrease that number the helicopter would feel almost as if it was delayed if it wasn't responding um, to your commands uh, in real time and then you go down and that's a cyclic rate. Cyclic rate, picture, um, imagine cyclic rate just being something like a dual rate uh, setting on your radio. Um, the default is 100. As you can see here, it's set to 80 because I had this set up for newbie. Um, but 100 works. You generally don't need to mess with it. Don't touch it. it it's just there for convenience. Um, and then next down would be the cyclic symmetry. And uh, these are some of the most advanced menus. You, you can um, use this to, to change the, the feel of the helicopter. So for example, if your roll feels faster than your flip, if, you're, if rolling the helicopter happens faster than flipping the helicopter, um, or to where the elevator and the aileron don't feel exactly the same, then you can use the setting, setting to equalize that. So if you, if you, if you have a, a roll that's faster than a flip, then use um, a positive value here. If your roll feels lower than your flip, then use a, a negative value here, and that should take care of it. Um, for me, out of all these, um, for me, out of all these helicopters that I've been flying with Spartan, um, and not just goblins, I've flown all kinds of different helicopters at the field, friends of mine to test and help them set it up. I've yet to have to tweak any of these settings. Um, next down is the cyclic decay and the cyclic decay is another advanced menu and what it does is it, it reduces the cyclic rate as the pirouetting speed increases so the faster you go with the pyro um, it reduces the cyclic automatically for you it just they say that it makes it feel more uh, uh, natural during pirouetting maneuvers and you it feels as if you had better control of the machine I don't mess with it I leave that like right at like zero. Don't mess with it at all. 
Um, and then next down is the, cy the Cyclic Expo. That just works just like normal Expo. Um, you can set up the Expo on your transmitter as well. You don't necessarily have to do it on your data pot. But the advantage of doing that in the data pot um, uh, is the fact that you can have different flight modes, which we will again talk about flight modes in the next segment. But you can have different flight modes, so you can have different expos for different flight modes. And theoretically, the algorithm built into the, uh, the Vortex uh, uh, works better if you're on the expo that is built into the Vortex as opposed to running expo through your transmitter. But in any case, um, either way works. And then next down is cyclic debt band. That's just, just debt band. Uh, in other words, that's the debt area um, on the stick of your transmitter. The higher that number, the, the more, the, you, you eventually you will have absolutely no input around the center stick. So again, don't mess with it. One down would be the advanced PID. And advanced PID tuning is just where you actually tune your PID settings, proportional integral derivative, derivative settings. So. Um, we have the I gain here, we have the P gain, we have the feet forward, the, the D gain for elevator and the D gain for aileron. Um, no need to mess with that unless you really know what you're doing there. So that's it for advanced menus, advanced settings on rotor. And then next would be tail, same situation. Um, as you can see, we only on tail have pure rate and gyro gain. If I hold the button, then it opens up the advanced menu. First one here on the tail is the acceleration, and acceleration is just how quickly your tail accelerates. Um, you can increase that number or decrease it, of course. I would leave it alone, to be honest with you, for most helicopters work. I increase it to 4,500, but that is because I'm running a tail belt driven helicopter. If you have a torque tube, be careful because it could be really harsh on your, on your gears. The next down is the same as acceleration, but for deceleration, and again, default on this one is 3,000. I increased this one to 3,500 myself, but again, I'm running a, a tail belt and not a, not a torque tube with gears. Generally, default settings work. Next down is the clockwise stop gain, and then one down from that is counterclockwise stop gain. So you can fine tune how your tail stops when you let it go abruptly to the uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. <clears throat> one down is the rudder expo default is 30 i actually run higher than that i run minus 50. i like uh, a faster tail so i add a little bit more expo to my tail negative numbers basically make the uh, tail feel slower off center and faster towards the end and positive numbers make the uh, the curve to where it's more responsive off center and then slows down towards the end so obviously negative number is what most people run uh, down from there, we have the stick dead band, same, same as uh, the cyclic dead band. The only difference is obviously for the tail. So you can increase the amount of dead area within your center, the center area the throw of your stick here on the transmitter. Well, now from that is the gyro type. So you can select a VCS or rate, and you can select it for all the flight modes, which we'll again talk about later. And then one down from that is cyclic to tail. And that is just a mix to where um, it, it's, it's mixing a little bit of cyclic uh, uh, pitch to the, the, the tail. Um, supposedly what this does is that this compensates um, for any uh, additional torque that results uh, from really fast cyclic inputs. Um, I don't use it. Um, I suggest it to Angelos to leave the default at zero as depending on your flying style during certain maneuvers like rolling circles and things like that, it seems to interfere with the helicopter behavior. Of course, you can add that um, value there if you wanted it to, but I believe that zero for most people work. And then one down from there is the collective two tail. And that is just basically mixing um, a little bit of tail to your collective inputs um, so that when you punch the collective really fast, you get a little bit of tail already added in there before the gyros get a chance to realize what you're doing. And that keeps the helicopter from torquing, from jerking the tail when you add really sudden collective um, input. So that's a good feature to have there. And that concludes the advanced section of the tail. So, so far we've talked about uh, the rotor menu, we've talked about the tail menu, um, experiment with those, there's a lot of cool settings to mess with, although really the most important settings are the agility to determine the speed of the roll and the elevator, the style to determine the overall feel of the cyclic, and then of course the 
the tail, um, the tail pirouette rate um, and the tail menu. And other than that, really, that's what most people should be messing with and that will make your helicopter fly fantastic. But again, you can mess with the rest of the settings and make it even better if you, if you choose to. So up next, we're gonna talk about flight modes.